Cause they're be natural Lady D Ain't me you techie Black. I keep my game tech Yo Yeah I'm so nappy I'm all big Cause they be natural The infamous Ain't me you techie Cause I keep my game tech oh, I'm so pretty I'm so fat boo I'm so natural It's like it's a taboo I'm so filthy Got the tattoos Cutting these bitches Like I own ragu On my business With my platoon Give me minutes Like I'm a top food Down this jersey On that cartoon And I'm still on top and welcome back to Afros and Baby Hairs. And thank you once again for joining me in the reading room for book review number 24 on Love and Hennessy 3, An Addictive Kind of Love by Carmen Lachey. If you would like to hear details about this book as well as my thought and opinions, then please keep on watching. I do not promote or encourage anyone to read this book who is under the age of 18. If you are under the age of 18, please get your parents' consent and or supervision before reading this book. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's get into this book review. So guys, I would like to start off by reading the back of the book. And it reads, was that really Pops that Ghost saw meeting with the feds? Or does somebody just want him to believe that it was? When we last left off in part two, Ghost proposed to Tommy. Will they finally get their happily ever after? Or is there somebody out there that refuses to let them be happy? Part three of this heart pounding saga picks up right where it left off with Ghost still searching for answers as to who killed Henry and turned snitch. Will Tommy choose to let Rodney be a part of his child's life, or is that chapter in her life finally closed for good? Jasmine and Dom have an on-again, off-again romance that's mostly off because Jasmine is hesitant when it comes to giving Dominique all of her. Will she put her pride to the side and get her man, or will she wait till it's too little too late? Dom, fed up with Jasmine, flip-flopping, love decides he's done with her for good. Will he stick to his word and kick her to the curb when a new love interest captures his attention? Or is the love he had for Jasmine too strong to just let, to just let it slip away? Rodney pissed off that his cousin not only stole his girl, but has staked his claim to his child. Isn't so willing to let go of them both without a fight. Will he continue to fight for their love until he succeeds? Or will he finally give up and focus on his relationship with Kelly? The plot of this crazy story once again thickens as rules are broken, bonds are bent, and no one is to be trusted as enemies become friends and friends become a thing you regret you ever had. Jump back into the saddle and take another ride with the gang as Tommy, Ghost, Dom, Jasmine, and Rodney are once again racing against the clock to stay alive while they battle with lies, treachery, deceit, and a little thing called love. Each battling with their own demons will everybody come out on top, defeat their enemy, and manage to stay alive long enough to find their happily ever after? Or will they once again find out the sad truth that all is fair in love and Hennessy? So now guys, I would like to introduce the new characters that popped up in this um, book. First we have Judy. This is a new researcher that took Kalina's spot with the organization under Ghost Organization. We have Rod, Jesse, Trevor, Tony, and Chad, which are all members of Ghost and Dom's crew. You have Kathy. And that is Rodney mom and Ghost's aunt. I found out her name in this book. You have Mariah, who is royalty's nanny. Lillian is a is a random Rod, Rodney is smashing. And Black is one of Rodney's workers. So this book starts off with Ghost still posted up at the meeting spot to see which one of his own is the snitch. He is sitting there waiting to make sure that his pops is indeed the person who steps out of the roles. He kept getting calls from Tommy the entire 30 minutes he was sitting there waiting. However, he ignored them and continued watching the vehicles to see who would be approaching who. Dom then called Ghost to let him know that he had to take Tommy to the hospital since he wasn't answering his phone. Once Ghost got off the phone with Dom and looked back in the direction of where the black SUV and the Rolls Royce 
was, they were gone. He then headed to the hospital and noticed he was being followed. He ended up losing the SUV by ducking off in an alley, then headed on to the hospital. Tommy was contracting, but not yet dilated. She chewed out Ghost for not answering his phone, and then they made up. Later, she got an epidural, but Ghost couldn't stay to see. He couldn't stay to see that he was afraid of needles. However, he went to the waiting area where Don and Jasmine sat looking uncomfortable and awkward. Then he asked Jasmine to go in with Tommy while he and Don went to get food. Ghost noticed that Tommy looked drained and he made a mental note to ask her about it later. Dom and Ghost decided to peel off and go by a convenience store to get blunts before they headed to the hospital cafeteria. However, once they went inside the store, two cops came in right behind them. The men had a few words, but as soon as Dom and Ghost pulled off, the cops turned their lights on to pull them over. Dom had his license registration and insurance ready and the men weren't worried about anything because they had a secret compartment they kept the guns dr and drugs in that no one would be able to find. However, one of the cops had a small bag of weed and he claimed to have found it, but neither Dom nor Ghost knew where the cops found it. Either way, when the cops did walk off to run Dom's license, Ghost had taken pics of both the cops and sent them to Judy. Judy was another geek who took Kalina's place. Obviously, Judy gave Ghost key details about the officers, and he used that information to get the officers off of him and Dom's back and out of the situation that was well on its way to escalating. Either way, Dom and Ghost finished smoking and headed back to the hospital to eat. Ghost told Dom about the SUV that was following him as he made his way to the hospital. He told Dom he couldn't really see who it was, but he knows it was a female. Dom responded with, it could have been Kalina. That's when Ghost said she didn't need to be chasing him. She needed to be chasing a bathtub. Dom told him to stop saying all that now because he was just flossing her dingy butt around town all booed up. And Ghost was like, that was before I found out she lived like a trash can. Either way, Ghost made a mental note to handle Kalina, the Kalina situation. After the men finished eating and headed back to the mater maternity ward, they ran into Menace. He explained that he had just got back in town and came back as soon as he got the news. Ghost couldn't believe that his pot was lying to his face, so he kept it dry and kept it pushing. Dom asked him what was that all about, and Ghost stated that he would tell him about that later. Tommy was in full-fledged labor at this point. Her sister Jasmine was in the room with her as she was struggling through the contractions. They ended up filming the baby mama dance for Facebook. After she was given an epidural, Later, when it was almost time to push, Dom showed up with the camera as she was attempting to deliver, Ghost showed up while she was going off on Dom about having the camera. Ghost told her it was his idea and that he wanted her mom to be able to witness the birth of her first grandchild, even though she couldn't be there. Tommy pushed until she heard her baby cry and then she passed out. Ghost stayed by her side and tended to the baby as Tommy slept. Ghost named royalty for Tommy and also signed the birth certificate while Tommy slept. When Tommy and Ghost made it home, he surprised Tommy with her push gift, which was a 2017 Audi. He also spoiled royalty. He wouldn't let anyone near her and she would only fall asleep on his chest that night. One day, Menace called and asked to see his granddaughter, and Tommy told him it was fine as long as he left his wife at home. However, when she ran it by Ghost, he was against it, but wouldn't tell Tommy what was up. She told Ghost he needed to fix the problem because she wanted her father in her child's life. When Menace came over to see his, to see his granddaughter, Ghost dipped to the bathroom and tried to call the captain of the police department, as well as Matthew, the up and com coming FBI agent. The captain did not answer, but Matthew eventually did. Ghost needed to know um, a minute's involvement with the FBI, so he and Matthew set up a meeting for Wednesday. On the way out, Ghost wanted to just kiss Tommy and the baby and leave without saying anything to Menace. However, that didn't go as planned. When Menace spoke to Ghost, Ghost clapped back with a sly remark and called him a snake, then tried to walk off. Menace caught up to him outside. They had words and eventually got to fight. Soon Tommy ran out there to see what was going on and Menace security showed up about 30 deep. So Ghost went on his way knowing that he couldn't win that battle. 
Ghost met up with Dom. He told Dom about seeing Menace car at the spot and Dom couldn't figure out why Menace would do this now. Dom also said that he would lay Menace out for trying to screw up his freedom. The men also spoke on Dom's situation with crackhead Jackie and her daughter. They were still coming by to visit Dom from time to time because Dom now considered himself Jacinta's uncle. Dom also spoke on Morgan, the girl he met at the Chipotle. He said that she was crazy and he was going to be cutting her off soon. He claimed that one day he went over to chill with her. She actually raped him. And then when he thought she was just freaky, then he thought she was just freaky. So one day when she came by his office, he wanted to do some freaky stuff in the office. She acted offended, but then turned around and showed up at his house wearing nothing but a trench coat and heels. She seemed a bit bipolar. Tommy ended up calling Ghost and going in because some anonymous woman called her saying, enjoy your man for now, but I'm going to be the stepmom to your daughter or something along those lines. So Tommy popped off on Ghost claiming she, she wasn't pregnant anymore and he and that woman could get it. Ghost could only think of Kalina, but he told Tommy that he would, he didn't get down like that and he didn't appreciate her threatening him. So she will have to pay for that in the bedroom. Ghost and Dom decided to head to New Jersey to pop, to pop up like it was the first of the month and the rent was due. They ended up at a house party where most of their crew was at. Some guy named Rob was hosting the party. A guy named Jesse was upset because no one came to his party a week prior. Then a dude named Kevin tried to pass a blunt he was smoking to Ghost, but he refused it saying he doesn't smoke nothing that he didn't roll all while pulling out his own blunt. Dom ended up with the Spanish chick and Ghost told him once he was done using the bathroom he would be ready to go. When Ghost was about to wash his hands he heard the door fly open and on instinct he grabbed his gun. It was a woman but he still told her he would be done in a second and the restroom would be hers. She was like that's okay because I came for you. Ghost told her he was a married man. Then the girl grabbed his jock and he aggressively pushed her away and drew his gun again because he had heard commotion outside the bathroom. He started shooting and people scattered running for cover. Him and Don made eye contact then headed out. Rodney was back sleeping with Amber, but he heard the rumors of her flaunting another dude around town. He still wasn't trying to make Amber his girl though because he felt like she was a little too loose. Amber got mad when he told her he wasn't leaving Kelly for her because Kelly was loyal. Amber said she, was, she wasn't going to keep going through this. First it was Tommy, now Kelly. She told him he thinks he's, he is out here choosing diamonds when all they are are Cuban zirconia. Rodney ended up leaving, headed to the store, but had the thought of Kelly cheating in the back of his mind because of what Amber said. Rodney also thought about Tommy and how she kept dismissing him and won't allow him to see the baby. But Rodney has devised some type of plan in his head to shake up Tommy and Ghost. When Rodney made it inside the store, he stood in line behind a girl he thought was attractive and tried to shoot his shot. The girl told him she had a man, but by the end of their conversation, she had given him her number. He then went to meet up with his team to discuss business at the round table. Mike was still getting on Rodney's ner nerves, asking all these questions about ghosts and about product. Eventually, Rodney's men wheeled in bricks stacked on a wheelbarrow, and Rodney told his crew he stole it all from ghosts. Mike wasn't having no parts of that, and he let it be known. That's when Rodney told him the only way to leave this organization is in a body bag. Mike told him to do what he had to do, but he wasn't going to have no parts of this death wish. And when, Mike, and when Mike was walking away, Rodney shot him in the back twice. Rodney continued with his meeting and went to check on Mike and to finish him off. But when he got back there, Mike was gone. So Rodney sent Monster to find him and to finish him were his direct orders. Rodney's mother had to put the switch to Carter's butt for telling the little girl to suck his penis. Rodney's Mother went off on him about all the wrong things he was teaching his son. She also told Rodney she was about to go out of town to help Tommy with the baby for a few weeks. Rodney got upset. He felt like she was leaving her grandson for a bastard. And that's when his mom reminded him that the baby came from his nutsack and that he needed to quit using the term bastard when referring to children.
Tommy hadn't seen Jasmine she, since she had given birth to royalty. They talked on the phone but hadn't seen each other. And to Tommy, it was strange of Jasmine. Tommy told her about the fight between Menace and Ghost but still didn't know why they were fighting. Jasmine also told Tommy that she needed to find out. Either way, Tommy decided she would pay her dad a visit to get answers and to also find out what was up with her sister. And Tommy joked around in the kitchen talking about each other's big head. Then Ghost said that women were still on him no matter how nappy his hair was. Then he told her about the girl who tried to attack him in the bathroom the other day. Tommy's whole attitude changed. And that's when Ghost told her she needed to kill that insecure stuff because all of the girls wanted him, but she was the one he wanted. And she was the one who had the ring. He told her she should be laughing at those skanks because he would never give them a reason to laugh at her. Tommy knew he was right and had to remember that Ghost was nothing like Rodney. Ghost and Tommy talked about letting her manage one of his clothing stores. He hadn't found a manager to run yet and until he did, he was working there from time to time. He told Tommy he would think about letting her have the job when Royalty got a little older, but he preferred that she stayed home with her. Then Ghost left, headed for his store. Tommy gave her nanny the day off because she had not spent one day with her baby alone since bringing her home. She had seen other women take care of their babies and she knew she was fully capable of, capable of doing it too. Tommy decided to go visit her dad to try to get some answers as to what was going on with him and Ghost. When she finally made it to the door and knocked a few times, a woman answered and told her they were not expecting any visitors, then tried to close the door. But Tommy stopped the door with her foot and barged right on in. Vivian was hanging up from a secretive phone call where she whispered, don't call me back, I will call you into the phone, as Tommy stood there listening, wondering if Vivian was cheating. Once Vivian realized Tommy was in the room, she stood up, and then her maid came rushing in telling Vivian she tried to stop Tommy from coming in. Vivian then stated that it was okay because some people don't get when they're not wanted. From there, Tommy and Vivian went back and forth with wordplay and eventually Vivian told her that Menace was in his man cave. After Tommy talked to her dad and was headed out, she was just as confused as she was before she went over there. Looks like no one knew why Ghost was beefing with Menace but Ghost. And as Tommy headed to her car, she got another anonymous call from some woman who was threatening to take her spot. So with that, Tommy headed to the gun range. She heard what Ghost had said about her not having to worry, but Tommy wanted to be prepared for whatever when it came down to protecting her family. She did exceptionally well at the gun range, per her hired instructor. He was impressed by her skills, being that she had never shot a gun before. Anyway, after leaving the gun range, Tommy headed to the supermarket. She needed to get answers out of Ghost and knew that the easiest way to his heart was a home-cooked meal. Kalina had been calling Tommy phone for hours playing game with her over the phone. Kalina was the sister to Dom's ex Jackie's pimp and he wanted to take Dom out for taking his property. Kalina was also Vivian's niece, explains why she didn't want to meet Tommy at the grand opening because her cousin Jasmine would have recognized her and blown her cover. Anyway, Kalina and Vivian weren't close, knit, just trying to dead the organization so that they could have access to all the money. Their goal is to try to either kill everyone in the organization or get them locked up including Tommy's mother that was a personal vendetta Vivian had. They had also been feeding the FBI false evidence including pictures and were responsible for the case getting reopened. Kalina met with Vivian to get a lead on how to get to ghosts. Vivian came across some new information that would lead him straight to their trap. That was the plan anyway. Either way Kalina had other plans of taking out Vivian once they got to the bag. Jasmine had been home battling morning sickness and reflecting back on her life and current situation. She understood that it was no one's fault but her own based on her decisions and judgment. She also knew that it was her own pride that, that pushed Dom away and would not let him love her. As she wallowed in her self-pity, she got a call from Mark's office. He had a two-month job offer for her, but instead of taking the job, she told the assistant to tell him that she needed to check her schedule and get back to him on that. After Googling details of pregnancy, pregnancy, she decided to throw on some clothes and go by the mini mart to get a ginger ale. When she got there, she ran into a tall, handsome, bald man. He 
ran a pickup line on her and put his number in her phone. He also mentioned that his name was Kenneth, as in Amber's Kenneth. Of the store, she headed to go see Tommy. They talked a bit about what Jasmine was going through, but Jasmine didn't say anything to her about the pregnancy, even though she wanted to. Either way, the girls spent the rest of their time making for the D videos to put on social media. <clears throat> Jasmine, Jasmine left Tommy's, headed to Walmart for the pregnancy test she had been procrastinating on getting. Once inside Walmart, she started picking up other things that she didn't really need to avoid the inevitable. She ended up bumping into Kenneth again while there. They talked a bit and decided to continue their shopping together. When they were almost done shopping, Jasmine told him she needed to go to the rest restroom, but instead ducked off to the aisle where the pregnancy tests were. She got overwhelmed with the selection and just chose one that wrote out in letters if you were pregnant or not. Just as she was about to leave the aisle, she spotted Dom and a little girl coming down her aisle. So she began backing up, but ended up bumping into a display, knocking everything off the shelves. She quickly stuck the pregnancy test in her back pocket as Dom approached her. She asked him what was he doing at that particular Walmart and he responded that Jackie lived close by. The little girl interrupted to tell Jasmine that Jackie was her mother and told Jasmine that her name was Jacinta. Jasmine told her that she had a pretty name then she tried to say her goodbyes as she took off to the bathroom. Once in the bathroom, she opened the pregnancy test and peed on it. Then she waited. Soon she heard someone come in, so she came out of the stall only to be face to face with Dom. He had seen the pregnancy test in her pocket and wanted to know the results. That's when Jasmine walked back into the stall, grabbed the pregnancy test, read it, and gave it to Dom as she walked out the bathroom, passing Jacinta, who sat on a bench talking to a Walmart associate. And she kept walking, leaving her cart full of unnecessary things and headed straight to her car, then headed home. She only wanted to crawl in her bed and eat ice cream. Once home, Jasmine hopped in the shower, and when she got out, she noticed she had multiple missed calls and messages from Dom, and she had a missed call from Kenneth. Ghost was on his way to meet Matthew for their Wednesday meeting when he got a call from his Aunt Kathy to inform him that she wouldn't be able to come spend time with him and Tommy right now because her sister Sheila was sick. She also told Ghost that she needed to talk to him about Rodney. When he got off the phone with his aunt, he jumped in the car with Matthew and they drove off and began to discuss what was going on with the case. Matthew told him he was only able to get a little bit of information because the file had been sealed. But there was a woman who was snitching. So Ghost put two and two together, realizing that it had to be Vivian driving Minnie's car that day. So he made Matthew take him back to his car so he could head to Minnie's house. On the way heading to Minnie's house, um, he got a call from Tommy to meet her at the hospital. Ghost didn't know what was going on and thought the worst, but he turned his car around and headed back towards his house. He scooped up Tommy and Royalty thinking something was wrong with one of them, but Jasmine had called Tommy and told her to meet her at the hospital because Jasmine's mom, Vivian, had been shot. Ghost took Tommy on to the hospital to be by Jasmine's side, but Ghost wasn't feeling Vivian. However, none of it was making sense to him. He took royalty and went and sat as the ladies comforted each other. Menace ended up seeing Ghost, and Ghost told him he had something to tell him, but he couldn't tell him there at the hospital. Then Ghost told him he would come over later to discuss. Menace hadn't forgot their last episode, so he warned Ghost that he wasn't with that funny business. Ghost broke into Captain Todd's house to play surveillance cameras. Then he made himself a sandwich and waited for the captain to return home. When he did, he brought a man looking female with him and they began to fool around in the dark not knowing that Ghost was there. And when Ghost turned on the light, they dismissed the girl and began to talk business. The, captain's, the captain put Ghost up on more game regarding the case and also told him that it was indeed a female that was snitching and claimed she had a file containing containing everyone ghosts were doing business with and that incriminating evidence is what they needed to nail him to the cross. Don went and got the strongest liquor he could find after leaving the Walmart and dropping Jacinta back off with her mom. He drove around, around for a while drinking until he ended up at Morgan's house. He got out of his car drunk talking to himself and some young dudes who were watching began making fun of him which eventually eventually led him to fight one of them after the fight Dom gave his card and told him to hit him hit him up he admired that the boy had heart even when his friends didn't help him
Um, got inside Morgan's house. All he wanted to do was go to sleep, and he did just that. The next morning, she entertained him before he left. He then went home, took a shower, then headed to Jasmine's house. They hung out, ate breakfast, and talked. They got some understanding about one another, decided to have the baby together, and decided to be a couple but wanted to take things a bit slower. Deep down, Dom admired Jasmine and couldn't think of a better person to have a child with. Either way, their meet and greet was interrupted by a call from Ghost who told, told Dom to get to the spot immediately. So Dom left to head that way but something told him to stop by one of the trap houses first before heading to the warehouse. And once he got there, he felt something was off which prompt, prompted him to draw his gun. And he crept around the back and before he knew it, three shots were fired. Kalina has shot Dom three times claiming she killed him and has shot Vivian, her aunt. Anyway, after popping Dom, Kalina headed back to, the, to her motel, which was at a rundown and raggedy Motel 6. She learned from Ghost to stay under the radar. Either way, she also shot Vivian because Kalina didn't like the whole idea about being a snitch and working with the feds. After Kalina cleaned up, she wanted to celebrate, so she headed to a club looking for someone to have a one night stand with. After the first man approached her, she invited him to her room. She made it clear that she wanted a wham bam thank you ma'am, but after she could not handle what dude was working with, she tried to renege on the deal. However, dude was not having it. He felt like she had got him hot and ready and then turned around and said no. He ended up pushing her on the bed with intentions of taking what he came for. But Little did he know, Kalina had a blade under the mattress that she grabbed as soon as dude pushed her down, then quickly sliced him across the face and ran to her bag and grabbed a gun. She shot dude twice in the head. Knowing that the police were on their way, on their way, she didn't have time to wipe down the room or dispose the body, so she grabbed her things, threw on her blonde wig, and then set the entire room on fire. Laying on the couch, taking a nap when someone started beating on the door. When she finally answered the door, it was a delivery guy there with a clipboard as well as small, a small rectangular box and a small square box. She had to sign the clipboard to retrieve the packages. Once she signed the clipboard, she got her packages and closed the door. Then she placed the two boxes on the counter under the assumption they were from her dad or ghost. She left them there to open later. Tommy had plans on going to check out venues for the wedding and she wanted Mariah, her nanny, and her baby to come along. She also called Jasmine to join them as well. After getting into their chauffeur car, Tommy got a call from an, an Atlanta number and it was Kelly on the other end going off about Rodney. The ladies went back and forth for a minute, sending threats and insults through the phone line. After the ladies searched for a venue, Tommy sent Mariah and the baby back home and her and Jasmine sat to have lunch. After talking a while, Kenneth showed up again looking like a stalker and asking Jasmine was she okay after leaving him at the Walmart the other night. He also sat down at the table, introduced himself to Tommy and extended his hand for her to shake. Reluctantly, Tommy shook it but wasn't feeling this guy and didn't need any pictures of him at their table getting back to ghosts. She tried to get Jasmine to get rid of him, but apparently Jasmine wasn't getting the hint. So Tommy got up and walked away from the table and, wait, and waited for her driver. Soon thereafter, Jasmine came over there with her and she began to explain to Tommy how she met Kenneth and how now he seems to be stalkerish. She decided to go back to Tommy's place until she heard from Dom. Once she saw the boxes on the counter that Tommy received earlier, she decided to open the rectangular one. Inside, she found a black rose and showed Tommy. Tommy. Neither could figure out what the black rose meant, so they decided to check the car and it read, Loose Lips Sinks Ships. That's when Tommy got up and opened the second box, which had a pair of lips in it, and she began to scream. Kelly went in on Rodney about all that the info Tommy had put her on. Rodney basically told her she was free to leave, so Kelly started packing her bags, talking about she had her own coins and didn't have to stay there. She also talked about him under his clothes and how she was going to have her brothers beat him up. While Kelly was doing all that talking and packing, Rodney had got a call from Amber, and when he answered, he told her that 
He had already told her that she couldn't call him like that. She responded by saying as long as she had a son and as long as they were sleeping together, she could call whenever she wanted. She also asked him why was he whispering while talking to her. Rodney asked her where her man was and she told him that Kenneth was out of town on business. Then Rodney told her that none of that had anything to do with him and then told her to go take care of his son, son then hung up. He hung up from Amber. His phone rang again. This time, it was one of his workers named Black, calling, <clears throat> calling him to inform him of a problem and that he needed to get to the warehouse. When Rodney opened the door to go back inside, he saw all of Kelly's suitcases in the foyer. He walked right past them, headed to the fridge to grab a beer. Kelly asked him, was he going to help her? And he responded, you got this, remember? After a, while, after a while of going back and forth with Rodney, she burst into tears and fell into his arms, and then they eventually went upstairs and made up. Once Rodney made it to the warehouse, he noticed nothing was out of the ordinary. As he walked on through, he realized they were celebrating because Rodney had made sure to pull them out of their drought, and everyone was able to eat good this month. They had strippers and everything. Rodney had his eye on one chocolate girl, but he was waiting to connect with uh, Lillian later. Anyway, Rodney asked Monster what was the word on Mike and he responded that he had been to his house and only found puddles of blood. Rodney said it was nowhere that Mike could hide so he would eventually find, find him. After that, Rodney headed out ready to hook up with Lillian. Once he was almost to the car, he heard an explosion behind him that threw him to the ground and when he rolled over, he was face to face with a desert eagle. Um, Ghost went to his warehouse to have a meeting with his men about the million in cocaine that came up missing and he was killing one he was killing one of them every 30 minutes after time went on and he had murked a few of his men he got a call from Tommy talking about the black rose and the plastic lips she was yelling and screaming so he hung up on her then called Menace and told him to pick up Tommy Jasmine Royalty and Mariah and bring them to his house after hanging up, he told Dom, now I do want to mention that when uh, Kalina shot Dom, Dom was actually wearing a bulletproof vest, so I wanted to throw that in. But anyway, after hanging up from Menace, uh, Ghost told Dom about what Tommy was talking about, and Dom got fired up thinking about Jasmine and his unborn being harmed, so he went to flying off at the mouth, at the mouth and that's when Ghost put two and two together. <laughs> Ghost went back to lecturing his workers and killing one every 30 minutes. Eventually, Mike came in wearing a sling and bleeding, telling Ghost he had answers as to how his product went missing. Then Ghost welcomed him and asked him what happened to his arm. Mike explained the, enti uh, Mike explained the entire situation about Rodney and Mo Monster. Then Ghost got a doctor to look at Mike's arm as they discussed the plan Mike had devised to retaliate against Rodney and his sloppy crew. Next thing you know, Ghost and Dom were following Rodney around, watching his every move. They allowed him to see the fruit of his labor before taking, taking him out. When the time came, Ghost and his men posted outside of Rodney's warehouse, and when Ghost gave them the word, the men went in to shoot everything in sight. And after the explosion went off in the warehouse, Ghost spotted Rodney face down on the ground. So he ran over to him, and when Rodney rolled over, he was staring down the barrel of Ghost's Desert Eagle. <clears throat> they said a few words, then Ghost lit him up. Dom and Jasmine were in the mall looking for Jasmine an outfit to wear to the engagement party. After walking and searching for hours, they came to a particular store as Jasmine tried on different outfits in and out of the dressing room as Dom waited in the sitting area. Soon thereafter, a woman called Dom's name from behind him, and when he turned around, he saw Morgan standing there. She began asking him all kinds of questions until Jasmine walked out and asked him did he like her dress. Don was so amazed with how Jasmine looked he forgot Morgan was standing there until Jasmine asked who she was. The ladies went back and forth for a minute. They chilled after Jasmine put Morgan in her place. Soon Kenneth walked up behind Morgan as if they were a couple. He spoke to Jasmine and told her she looked better since the last time he had saw her. Dom questioned Morgan about why was she questioning him if she was there with someone else. Then he turned and asked Jasmine if she knew the dude. Jasmine responded yes and no, then acknowledged Kenneth. 
Dom at this point had his hand on his gun. Kenneth noticed, then grabbed Morgan and stated that he didn't want any problems with these good people as they walked away. Julius was blowing up Dom's phone. Once Dom answered, he heard Julius going back and forth with women. But between going back and forth with the women, he managed to tell Dom to hurry and get to the store. Dom headed straight over, but when he got there, he noticed the parking lot was empty and it was peak hours. He walked up to the doors and noticed that they were locked as well. So he instantly knew something was up. So he drew his gun. He began beating on the door and eventually Julius came and let him in. That's when Julius began explaining as he continued to straighten the store. He told Dom that a man came by with a crew of dusty and busted women who tore up the store. The man had told Julius that Dom had taken something that belonged to him and he needed it back. After finding out that Mandy didn't turn on the cameras when she was when she opened the store that morning, Dom ended up firing her. Dom then stayed at the store helping Julius until about 7 p.m. On the way going by Jackie's house, Dom called Ghost to let him know about what had happened. Once he got to Jackie's, Jacinta opened the door and Dom got on to her about answering the door. Then he asked her where was her mother. That's when Jackie came from the back wearing lingerie. But Dom was disgusted because the crack had, to the had took a toll on her. Either way, Dom asked her why has she been blowing up his phone like that. She said something about fate was giving them a second chance to be together. Somehow Dom knocked Jackie's purse from the counter and all the contents fell out. Jackie rushed over to gather her things but Dom was already gathering her stuff and saw a picture which was of Kenneth. She asked Jackie who was that and she stated that he was her pimp as well as Jacinta's father. Ghost and Tommy decided to have a night out full of shopping, drinking, and dinner. After they had a few drinks, they decided to prepare to head home. Both of them were tipsy. They made out in the parking lot, even had a little peep show. And after playing around for a bit, Ghost finally got Tommy in the car. They were still messing around as Ghost drove. Then Tommy decided to hop on top of Ghost while he was driving and do her thing. They were safe as long as she kept her eye on the road and he kept his foot on the gas. Once they were done, Tommy got back over on the passenger side and a few minutes later someone fishtailed them on the driver's side. Ghost was knocked out but soon regained consciousness. Then he looked over at Tommy who was slumped over and then he tried to wake her. Someone then opened his door as Ghost tried to reach for his gun but he was too slow. Someone said, gotcha is they shot him three times. That is where this particular book ends. So I just have a few thoughts and opinions on this book because this book basically explains itself. And the first one is for some reason it seems like everybody that these members of the organizations organization are dealing with all seem a little suspect to me. Amber, Kalina, Kelly, Morgan, Kenneth, and Vivian all seem a little shady. And of course, Rodney is shady as well. I wonder if he is truly dead though. <clears throat> The next thing is, I wonder what's going to happen between Vivian and Kalina now that Kalina betrayed her and you know Vivian actually lived after being shot. <clears throat> the next one is, why did Kelly give in so fast to Rodney? It's like she already got a call from a girl named Rachel who claimed she was pregnant, then she called him in something else that Rodney con conveniently blamed on Tommy. Um, it seems like enough would have been enough. And I'm curious to know if Morgan and Kenneth are on the same team. If not, how do they even know each other? The next one is, even though we know that Kenneth is a pimp, he is also FBI. His character draws a lot of questions. He is also supposed to be Amber's man, yet trying to hook up with Jasmine. Now he's, he's with Morgan, but has a slew of prostitutes working for him and apparently having his children too because he is also Jackie's baby daddy. So anyway, let me know what you all think of this series so far. Please comment below. Um, we're going to move on to... Um, Love and Hennessy 4, an addictive kind of love. So yeah, guys, um, I do want to thank you all so much for joining me in the reading room today. I appreciate your time and energy. I look forward to seeing you all on the next book review. Peace and love. And as always, be blissful. DJ, DJ, Mike, Mike C. C on the track. track. track.
Cause they're few natural Lady D. Ain't Ain't you natural Ladies They ain't gonna take you I keep my game tackled Yo Yeah I'm so nappy I'm all big Cause they be natural The infamous Ain't looking tacky Cause I keep my game tackled I'm so pretty I'm so fat boo I'm so nappy It's like it's a taboo I'm so filthy Got the tattoos Fuckin' these bitches Like I own ragu On my business With my platoon Gettin' these minutes Like I'm a taco Y'all is jersey On that cartoon And I'm still on top Of these buffoons I'm so nappy I'm so nappy Got these dudes that wanna get at me I'm so cultured and I'm happy Just as what you wanna come back me Cause I'm comfortable in my skin End of the day you lose I win I'm so profitable in my ends Don't care if I make or lose a few friends And I look like a trillion bucks Let it be one a lotto Cause in the Lord I trust And beauty is the motto Naturally thick in the butt I'm Billy Blanks on the top oh, It's just a little rough Just pretend I'm from Morocco Or get all up in my hair Cause I let my locks grow naturally My curls popping everywhere I'm maximizing on this natural thing Like it or not I don't care You clowns ain't about to worry me Cause I does this for myself And I'm rapping for my ancestry Yeah, so nasty Cause that be natural Ain't